My next guest has prayed for eight dead people who have come back to life. His associates have prayed for over a hundred dead people who have come back to life. Is it possible that you and I can tap into such miraculous power? Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. And I have to tell you, I have been so looking forward to this interview. My guest is Surpriza Zatoli. And Surpriza, how did you get the name Surpriza? I got the name because of this spot here on my side. Uh -huh. I see it. Yes, when, when I was born, they were not expecting to have a, uh, somebody with a gray hair coming out. So when they that, saw That's it, unusual in Africa. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So when I was coming, they said, oh, this is a surprise. I see. Now, when you were six months old, uh, a dog ripped your eye out. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, tell me about you that. You see the, this skull here. Yeah. You can see the skull. So uh, when I was six months old, the dog was eating the food, and then I was just approaching, crawling there to the dog food, and then the dog ripped, bite it, bitten me here, and the eye went to fall off. That is what they completely say. Completely out of your body. Completely out of, off. Mm. So my mother, with a piece of cloth, they ran and get the eye and put it back, the time here, and then stay that for two weeks, and then after the two weeks they opened, my eyes was fine. Now, you were born in Mozambique? I was born in Mozambique, And yes. you have to understand, Surpriser came from more generations of witch doctors than he can remember. But uh, when you were a young man, uh, you heard a voice. Tell me about that. Yes, when I was a young man, I heard a voice. We were sleeping in this small, muddy hut, and the voice was so loud. Surprise, surprise, wake up. Move out from the, your village. Surprise, surprise, wake up, move from your village. Well, when I woke up, my father and my mother, they were sleeping. I woke up, I said, who is this is one that is speaking? Move from your village, if you don't move, you die. Move from your village, if you don't move, you die. I woke up, I went to the house of my friend Gafar that night. And then Gafar, I told Gafar what had happened to me. I said, I'm going away of the village. Gafar said to me, I will go with you wherever you go. Okay, so we took off. It was very small trail in the jungle, forest is where we were living, a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of malaria bugs and all kind of that stuff. So we started walking on the small trail. We got lost. We stayed in the jungle for two weeks. Later on, we appeared at the border of Malawi, the village called Villanova. So when we appeared there, there was a man that he had a dream. His name, this man, is Lucas. This man had a dream, go to the, this one of the trees, acacia tree, go to that acacia tree, you will see two boys coming from the jungle. Get them into your house. And then this man, the following, the following day after his dream, he went to that tree. And while he was on that tree, we were coming, me and my friend Kafar. And then he said to, to us, I was just here to wait for you, let's go to my house. I mean, th this is pretty supernatural. He hears a voice, he leaves his home, uh, a man meets him who, uh, did this man know Jesus? Yes, he was a Christian. And he led you to know Jesus then? The following day. Okay, yes. but, and what, you've, what he found out is if he had not been obedient and left his house, what happened to everyone in your house? This is what happened the following day. We gave our life to Jesus before that man, Mr. Lucas, and then two, because we were two weeks in the jungle. 
now later on the fisherman was just going to Malawi to sell the fish and then they say in the village such and such family they all died how they died the village people they took the bile of crocodile the bile of crocodile is very poisonous they put it in, into the maize meal they mix with the bile of crocodile they take the food to give my family so your family was all poisoned yes they and all if poisoned. you had lived there you would have been poisoned. I like to eat so <laughs> okay, so, so get this. A voice tells them to leave. What did you, coming from all those generations of witch doctors, yes. had anyone told you about Jesus before this? That before then, I, we didn't know even about, uh, about Jesus. Are you, no, are you what the, we knew are you the on, first one in your, your... I'm first generation, yes, believer. Okay, did, you told me that you had like a, a dream or almost a vision just before you received Jesus, tell me about that. The dream is that there was a vision when Mr. Lucas was telling us about the creation. He was explaining the creation, said the creation is so, so, so. And then he started talking a little bit about the plan of God. So suddenly I saw my eyes was just like changing, not being there anymore. So I was seeing, I was in the hedge, and then this was the hell burning, and then I'm ready to go into, the, into it. Me, so and then I started crying and shaking. And Mr. Lucas said, no, as long as you breathe, you have a chance. How did you even know about hell? Oh, well, he was talking, was talking and the plan of God. See, what did you see with your eyes? What I really saw in my eyes, I was standing like this place, it was on the hedge, and then this is very deep, steep something and the smoke is coming out and the flames of fire is coming out and then I was ready my life to go into it. So then it started shaking yeah, You would like crying. be pushed over a ledge. And, yes, yes, yes. And God, did you, did you feel like it was real? Were the, was it like flames of fire? Well, I felt that I was shaking and crying tear down. Now today, Surprise, and remember how he got his name. He was a big surprise. Africans in Malawi, uh, in Mozambique, uh, they don't have gray hair when they're born like that. Uh, and he has prayed for eight people that were dead that have come back to life. His associates have prayed for over a hundred. And I understand they don't even count someone that yes. they were dead and they came back to life unless they were dead for a while. How, yes. what, what, tell me what they look for to, to count someone as they've at, come. At least a day. At a least day, a day they yes, have to be day dead. day to day because some people, they just have a heart attack, fainting and uh, all Okay, kind of I want to find out. I want to find out the first time he prayed for a dead person that came back to life. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to it's supernatural. For he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself, to create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Adim Novi Chalavik. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Surprise of Satoli. And Surprise, uh, you were the first person in your family, you know, how, who knows how many generations, that came out of being a witch doctor to yes. being a sold out believer in Jesus. And was it your uh, cousin or your brother uh, uh, became a believer in Jesus? Uh, the one that uh, died recently? Yes, is my cousin. All right, your cousin yes. became a believer in Jesus. Why yes. did, what happened to him? What happened to him, he was a wild person in preaching on the trends and the market and so on. But uh, just recently... Wilder than you? <laughs> yeah, he was more... <laughs> <laughs> and then so what happened 25th of September, it was the day of the, called the holiday for the military. So, and then he was preaching at the market. When he was going home, he found that the people, the religious people, they killed him. Now, when you found out about this, the devil got payback. 
You had yes. a meeting. Did many Muslims come to the Lord at your meeting? Oh, well, after that, uh, it was three weeks later because I was in Israel that time. So I went back to that area where he was killed and then we started gathering the people. 4,000 people, they came to that meeting. And uh, half of them, 2,000, they gave their life to Jesus. Were many of them Muslims? Yes. Are many Muslims coming to know Jesus in Africa? Oh, this is a good news for them, though, so much because they are coming rushing like they are running from something, from danger and so on. I'm they are wondering the if Lord. many of the Muslims were like you, in other words, having visions or, or, or dreams from heaven or, 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 and being told to believe in Jesus. Is that happening to many? Lots of Muslims. Some of them, and like just another man, he was just going to kill himself. He was a Muslim, mm -hmm. he was going to kill himself. When he was going to kill himself, he met this man, bright man, shining before him. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to kill myself. He said, no, don't go to kill yourself. Go back and look for a pastor and he will tell you something. He came back and find the, the house of Christian. The man was not there, he found just only the children. And then the man came back, spoke to him, he gave his life to Jesus. Now he's a pastor. And that's happening to many Muslims. Yes. I want to find out the first time that Surprisa prayed for a dead person that came back to life. Do you remember that first time? I remember that very Tell much. Me. Well, I was in this village. The village is called Komati Tri. So I was doing this, a small revival meeting as in the community hall. So the next day, the chief of the area of Komati Tri came to me and said, shut down the revival meeting because someone died at the, near the community hall. I say, Chief, can I go there to see the person? And he said, yes, of course, let's go. He took me to the house. I found six ladies, they were sitting in the house. And then the chief introduced me to those ladies. He, went, he walked up, went home to his house. Well, and then what had happened, I asked the lady if I can pray. He said, of course, go ahead and pray. I started praying. While I was praying, I opened my eyes the ladies, they were sleeping. The girl was the girl of six years old. Her name is Nshansha, the name of the girl. And Nshansha was wrapped with a sheet. Hmm. So I look around, the ladies were sleeping. So, oh, this is my chance. I walk to the, to the girl that was laying down and wrapped. And I myself, I start unwrapping the girl. Unwrapping the girl. Suddenly, the hand came out, stiff and cold. Well, I took my finger. I look still around, the ladies, they were sleeping and snoring. I took my finger into the stiff handed girl, hand of the girl. I was praying. Suddenly, the girl grabbed up my finger. I was really <laughs> shocked. I jumped, I stood far away. <laughs> <that Shay! time. laughs> so she looks at me and says, I'm hungry. Well, I look around, the ladies, they were drinking Coca-Cola. I took the Coca-Cola, put into the glass I gave to the girl. I woke up, the first person I woke up, the mother woke up. When the mother woke up, whoo, she was shocked. All the six ladies ran out and started <laughs> shouting out. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the chief heard the noise. Chief came running and when he came inside the house, he saw the girl was just having, drinking a nice Coca-Cola. I'm not advertising Coca-Cola. No. <laughs> I, I understand. You're a, yes. He's advertising the King of Kings. That's yes, who yes, he's yes. advertising. <laughs> yes. They must have been shocked. Uh, tell me about the time you had a dream about a dead person that came back to life. Well, another one is that this is the elder man. His name is Inyoni. At night, I just had a dream. I see the bunch of people going to, the, to bury someone, but I had an impression, something, talking, that person is not dead, was on my dream. I ran to, the, to, to them, I said, please, I want to see this person that you are going to bury. And then they say, oh, no, we say, please, please, please open for me. They open. When I saw the person, it was just like the person had so much laughter in his mouth. So this person has so much laughter, it's not dead. And then after that, I prayed in the, in the name and then so the person rose from the dead. That was on the dream. The following day, by the whole day, the mind went out, I didn't think, and then someone came to me and said, they are going to bury someone today. I said, uh, where is that? They said, here just by the mountain at a new farm. I said, oh, let's go. And then we went, there. we went straight into the house. 
we find the people they are making, they took the door of this man and his table, they are making coffin out of it. A coffin? Yes, a coffin from his mm -hmm. door and his right. table, so the, those pieces. They are finishing, the, making the coffin. So this man was dead for three days. Now we went inside the house, we asked the people if we can see the person. They said, of course, they gathered the family together. They went there and pulled down the, the, the sheet that was closing there and they opened the face. As soon as they opened the face, I realized that the face that I saw last night in my dream, I started being filled with the joy and started laughing and praying. You knew. You I knew, knew that I knew that he exactly is going to come up back to life. And did he? So in the prayer he shouted, Hey! At the end of the story. Well, the the when he shouted the, like that, it means that even the toilet came out because the noise was being said the room was filled with intense massive of stinking, smelling, very bad smell. But he was not even ashamed. He was happy and then so on. So this man in his testimony said, during that when he was sleeping, he was fighting with the dark forces. Mm -hmm. So the dark forces was pulling him into the place that was so much hotter and hotter and hotter. Until when the bright shining light came, started shining there, is when the dark force left at him and he, when he came up again rose from the dead. You know what? There is such a presence of God in this studio. Surprise, do you feel what I feel? I, I feel, I feel right I, now. And, and I'm going to tell you something else. Surprise told me he is happy no matter what happens 24-7. How would you like to be happy? I mean, genuinely, not drumming it up, but genuinely happy, enjoy 24-7. I would. I know you would. When we come back, I literally believe we're going to have resurrection power from the dead. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. An angel of the Lord appeared to surprise us at Tolly and shared how to walk in supernatural faith. As a result, he has personally seen eight people raised from the dead. Now he wants to impart that childlike faith to you. Call now and receive Surprises Atoli's life-changing book, Faith to Raise the Dead, and his powerful audio CD teaching, How to Have Childlike Faith, both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9102. Through this book, you will receive childlike faith to see the impossible become possible. Learn how to clearly hear God's voice. Instantly speak languages never learned. See into the supernatural world. Find out how to release all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Understand how to cast out demons and so much more. Through this audio CD teaching, you will receive an impartation of the same supernatural faith that Surpriza walks in, so you will begin to see miracles take place in your everyday life. If you have faith to raise the dead, you have faith to do anything. I think you need an injection of childlike faith. Faith. Don't miss out on getting Surprisa Satoli's life-changing book, Faith to Raise the Dead, and his powerful audio CD teaching, How to Have Childlike Faith, both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9102. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9102 or log on to SidRoth.org. We now return to it's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Surpriza Satoli. And Surpriza, just before the break, did you, you felt what I felt. Yes. It, it was, was it angel came in? What happened? Why did you just the presence of God get so strong? Yes, because God is about to free some people and some things. Would you pray for them now? Yes, 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 Do yes. That. And I see there is a man with his wife and he has been having a tremendous time, um, not good time, not 
uh, excitement time, but God wants just right now, as they are sitting on the cushions, they are right now watching this program, and they really need the freedom. And God, I, I feel like there is a draining rainbow upon them right now, and He's just giving that rainbow. Is there is a rainbow the cushion, and I feel that the cushion is brownish and so something like that. And God will just want to touch them right now and release the freedom. Pray for them, them right? Now. Right now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the major freedom to my dear or oh, to that and his wife right now blessing and freedom in Jesus name you know I believe God wants to do some more yes but I, I'm just hearing I know this is little but I'm just <laughs> hearing someone has a headache yeah and the headache is gone and it's not little to you it's good to be free tell me about the person with no eyeballs they got their eyes. This is the lady that we prayed for at a conference. And we prayed for this lady. And then this lady didn't have, she had a disease. The disease normally is in Malawi, that disease that when that disease start, the eyeballs start to get shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. The liquid water comes and then at the end, the eyeball goes away. So we prayed for, she didn't have an eyeball on both eye. After we pray, she didn't get, but what had happened is that when she went to sleep that night, during the night in her dream, she dreamed that she see, and then she went outside and started singing. Now other ladies, they woke up, and when they went and said, oh, who brought you outside? They say, no, I'm dreaming that I can see. They say, no, you are not dreaming. What do you say? I'm just having this a nice dream. The following day, she had a brand new eyeballs. Uh, someone's uh, leg is being healed right now. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's from the knee down to the foot. In that area, you're being healed right now. And someone's back is being healed right now. And someone's hip is being healed right now. Tell me about, and, you know, he's in Africa and he has seen every miracle in the Bible. How about feeding? where food is multiplied. Oh, that is what we heard is so much of that. And so much <laughs> of that, did you get that so much? <laughs> so, I love his childlike faith. <laughs> we had chicken multiplied, bread multiplied. How many people were fed from how much food? Tell me. About we had a bag that which was in 2000, the year 2000. We that time was having a flood in Southern Mozambique. So we, we got on one bag. We didn't count how many bread, but it was on one bag to go. We took it to the concentration camp where the people, um, well, we don't, it's not a refugee camp. It's just where they are running from the flood. And it was thousands okay. upon thousands upon thousands. We started giving the people that bread. How much bread did you have? It's one bag. One bag. How big a bag? One like, bag, maybe the bag like this. Okay. But it was thousands upon thousands of people. You saw thousands and thousands of people getting bread from yes, one bag. from one bag and never finish. Was there food left over? Well, yes, yes. We still had the bag. Yeah. We still had what the did bag. The people, did the people realize what was going on? Well, the people, maybe they thought that we hide it somewhere, <laughs> so we're just going and get and, more. And you see this type of thing often exactly. in Africa. Exactly, so many well, times. If you were to pray for the people that are watching right now, or by way of video, could we live in joy 24-7? So much. We, would you pray right now? Yes, I can do that right now. Right now. Yes. Thank you, Father. Right now we come to you and pray for dear watch the listeners and those that in the whole audience in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the joy that will come 24-7 to each and every one, the everlasting joy, the contagious joy, the epidemic of joy in the name of Jesus. I declare this joy to all the, the, the audiences wherever by thousands wherever they are, joy and freedom and everlasting joy in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In someone's chest, there is a tightening going on in your chest. You're not having a heart attack. That's a lying symptom. You are free in Jesus' name. And someone also is the itching of left and eye. 
So right now, even that has been caused by sinus, but right now I rebuke it and you be healed right now in Jesus' name. There's such a peace. So Is there much. anything else that God wants to do right now? Yeah, I, f I feel like God wants to lift the people into their dreams because I feel like there is a lot of people out there that they've forgot their dreams. So to renew their dream. To renew their dreams. And for it to happen. Yes. To come to pass. Pray yes. real quick. Yes, right now. Thank you so much. I pray that you will bring back what which is lost. In Jesus' name, let the dream come back. And you know what? Uh, we, we did a special tape where you began worshiping. I want our people now to experience the African Christian form of worshiping God. Would you worship God right now? Lift your holy hands up. <laughs> Lift your holy hands up and join us. Begin to worship Ooh, God. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, you, yes, you are faithful. You are faithful. You, you are faithful. You are faithful, King oh, of Glory. You, as we Jesus. worship you right now. You, oh, yes, yes. Praise oh, you, right Jesus. now. I feel like it's almost like a spagnard oil being poured out. Oh, a spagnard oil, a spagnard oil. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Yes, the king is at a table right now. Oh, Jesus, you are faithful. Oh, Lord, you are faithful, oh, Lord, every day, every hour, you are faithful, oh, Lord. I pray this faithfulness, let the listeners, the, oh, Jesus, thank you, you are so faithful, the loving and most holy, thank you. Jesus' name. An angel of the Lord appeared to surprise us at and shared how to walk in supernatural faith. As a result, he has personally seen eight people raised from the dead. Now he wants to impart that childlike faith to you. Call now and receive Surprise Satoli's life-changing book, Faith to Raise the Dead, and his powerful audio CD teaching how to have childlike faith, both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9102. Through this book, you will receive childlike faith to see the impossible become possible. Learn how to clearly hear God's voice. Instantly speak languages never learned. See into the supernatural world. Find out how to release all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Understand how to cast out demons and so much more. Through this audio CD teaching, you will receive an impartation of the same supernatural faith that Surpriza walks in, so you will begin to see miracles take place in your everyday life. If you have faith to raise the dead, you have faith to do anything. I think you need an injection of childlike faith. Don't miss out on getting Surpriza Satoli's life-changing book, Faith to Raise the Dead, and his powerful audio CD teaching how to have childlike faith, both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9102. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9102 or log on to SidRoth.org. Next week, on It's Supernatural. Is it possible that there is an ancient mystery that holds the key to America's future? Could this same mystery be behind current events from 9-11 to our economic meltdown to even the war in Iraq? <laughs>